Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you guys remember recently, I've been doing a series where I go from unranked to diamond by playing Astra only with comms muted. I'm doing this because so many of you constantly talk about how your teammates don't listen to anything you say and complain about how our tips don't actually apply to your elo. So to figure out how to help you, I have to experience what low elo is really like because it's been a hot second since I've actually been there and you guys say that we don't understand it. Initially, when I started playing Valorant during the beta, I was placed in Iron 2, but through blood, sweat, in tears, I was able to fight my way up to Immortal. However, I hit Immortal over a year ago and the game has changed, the community has changed, and your needs have changed. What it takes to climb nowadays might actually be completely different of what it took back in the day. When I was your age, omens would teleport behind everyone and kill them because they just couldn't hear it. But nowadays, everyone has their turtle beaches turned on and even plats will one-tap you if you give them the chance. It's a different game now and I've learned a ton from doing this climb. If you watched our first two episodes, I went through some of the highs of the series, but today I want to talk about some of the lows. I want to talk about the most painful parts of this climb. The parts that made me want to pull my hair out. The parts that made me not just angry, but furious at the game. And not even just the game. The parts that made me not just angry at the game, but the parts that made me angry at you. King, why would you be angry at me? Oh, you know why. We'll get into that later though. Before we talk about the worst parts of the climb that I learned from though, remember if you want to view our full climb to diamond in its entirety, that's all available over at Skillcap. Since I had comms muted for every match, it gave me a lot of time to talk through my thought process during the games and let you know why I was making the decisions that I made. You get to see exactly what it takes to win matches, as well as how I reflect on the mistakes that I make throughout the series. This is a great opportunity for all of the naysayers in the comments to see how very possible it is to rank up out of elo hell while playing one of the worst agents in the game to do it with. The best part is our whole service is backed by our rank improvement guarantee, so if you watch the series and can't seem to rank up yourself, you'll get your money back, no questions asked. We do this because we actually care about helping you improve, so if you're interested, feel free to give it a shot and we'll see you there. Starting out with one of the first things that I noticed during this climb though, and that is that some of you may be severely hindering your own ability to climb in Valorant. Trust me when I say, when you force Astra into your comp for every single game, you see some shit. Specifically on the maps where Astra maybe isn't considered the best controller, it wasn't incredibly uncommon for me to see players on our team decide to force pick another smoke agent just to compensate for the Astra pick. They could have just not trusted me because I had comms muted, or maybe they just genuinely wanted to play smokes, or they were just upset that I picked Astra, who knows. But I'm almost positive in this specific case, our Viper didn't actually want to play Viper, he just picked Viper because he felt like you need Viper on Breeze. Lots of players have this mentality that the game absolutely needs to be played a specific way, and any players who try to do something off meta are trolling. But the reality is that as long as you've mastered the fundamentals, you can climb playing pretty much any agent. That's sort of what I was trying to prove with the series. I wanted to show you guys that regardless of teammates or agent picks, you can rank up by just implementing solid fundamentals and making good decisions. However, not only does this Viper player not have solid fundamentals, he also put himself in an uncomfortable position by force picking an agent that he doesn't doesn't know how to play. That her playing halls isn't very beneficial for us. She can like I'm stall a push for so vision. long if she's played correctly, but um, instead our Viper is just kind of like sitting in halls being useless. And it's like, it's really unfortunate. Because uh, notice now we just got run over on B site because I can't play B because I have to play A. And it's like really awkward. If potentially we didn't have a Sentinel on our team to watch halls, then I could see maybe having a second controller halls would be a good thing. But when our jet is soloing B site alone, this should be a clear sign to any player that maybe it would be a good idea to use chamber trip for halls and send our Viper over to B to anchor. But she doesn't have an improvement mindset, she has a hero mindset. Now, some of you are probably thinking, King, why are you being so hard on this guy? Because he literally rage quit the game. These people are tilting themselves. Nobody asked him to be a hero, I'm currently top fragging on Astra, and my Viper can't even hold his mental together for 30 minutes. Then, when we switched sides, not only did we win the pistol round 4v5, but we won the second round, and we won the bonus round. I think that this is all part of a bigger issue with many players though, that I've already briefly mentioned, which is that this main character syndrome that so many players seem to have is a massive issue. Too many players are queuing into this game with the expectation that they have to have their entire team on their back, and all of the players of their team are literally spawn of Satan come to steal their elo. But this conversation really may seem like a catch-22, because in this case, it kinda looks like my team was the spawn of Satan coming to steal my elo. 
Not only did Viper leave, but later on in the game, Reyna left too. Clearly my team was the issue in this game, so obviously it's okay for me to blame them, right? Well, this is where most people would get lost on this whole improvement mindset thing. You should treat every single loss as if it's your fault. You never want to let yourself get away with blaming your teammates for a loss because there is always something that you could have done better. Think of it this way. Let's say I blame my team for this game. I just spent 30 minutes in the game. My teammates probably stole around 20 RR from me. I'm tilted now, so I'm going to have to take a break. And not only that, I'm going to have to win one more game to gain that RR back. And I'm also going to have to win one more game to gain the RR that I should have gained from that game. Not only that, but I'm also just as likely as I was before to get levers on my team in the future. This sounds like a lot of negatives in the match with very few positives. Now, try to think about it this way. I got unlucky. I had two levers in my match. It's kind of just part of the game. Sometimes I get levers, sometimes they get levers. It sucks, but it's not like it happens every single game. We were losing 3-8 to eight, though before my Viper left. Is there anything I could have done differently to make sure that we were in a better position so maybe she didn't leave? Well, there was this one round where I missed used my Astro Wall, and it could have ended up costing us a really important round in our defense. Now at least I know that mollies are a big threat when using my Astro Wall, and I'm more aware of this going forward into my next match. I also could take a look at this round where I over-aggressed just a bit when our team had numbers advantage. Granted, I don't know why their Sage would stay here with an Operator when her teammates were already in our spawn, but in reality, this is why fundamentals are important, because fundamentals tell me that I probably shouldn't push this, and I decided to push it anyway. Had I just recognized that we had a numbers advantage, and how important of my life was, maybe we end up winning this round. By recognizing these things, I didn't waste 30 minutes of my time, I at least learned something that I maybe didn't consider before, which should actually help me win more rounds in the future. I'm still just as likely to get levers as I was before, but at least because I improved even a little bit, so when a lever costs me one out of my every 10 games, I'm still more likely to win those other 9 games that I get. When we tell players to accept responsibility for their matches, we're not saying that your teammates are never the issue. What we're saying is that blaming your teammates doesn't really yield to any benefit other than just boosting your ego. In fact, in this Viper's extreme case, it probably cost her a whole game. Last player oh man, man, I'm getting flanked. Cool. Well, GG, I guess. Defenders win. Um, just get that game out of the way. Honestly, like, that wasn't much of a tilter, just as much of it was, like, just disappointing. <laughs> it just it just sucks when you have levers because you don't even get a chance, you know? It's like our offense was going pretty well. If that Viper doesn't leave before offense, we could start to win. But everyone's, like, so afraid or, like, I don't know, they're so frustrated for whatever reason during the, the, the beginning of the game that it's just like it they just they they lose the they lose the game before they even lost the game, you know? He decided that he didn't want to play the game more than he decided that he wanted to win it or like try to win it, try to figure it out. So I mean, when did he leave? It was like round maybe we were like three nine, something like that. Um, and he was just like, I don't wanna play anymore. Um, which is just Man, that's just disappointing. It is definitely a disappointing thing. Believe it or not though, this was only the first thing I wanted to talk about in this video. Because the thing that really annoyed me during this climb actually has to do with the reason that I started this climb. Which, if you recall back to our first video, was because so many of you always talk about how your teammates just don't listen to you. While I believe that happens in some of your matches, the thing that annoyed me about this climb is that it did not feel like a one-to-one -one comparison to your matches. It felt far worse. Which is fine, I get it, I'm smurfing, but but just so we're clear, this wasn't fun for me. Sure, it was fun to push myself with a challenge and see if I could really do it, but Valorant isn't meant to be played this way. You're meant to talk to your teammates and coordinate with them. It's a team game, and even just having one teammate to work with can make all of the difference. But to put it plainly, this whole climb was incredibly lonely. It felt like I was playing a single player game, and it quite literally ruined all of the reasons I like to play Valorant in the first place. You all claim that your teammates don't listen to you. My teammates couldn't listen to me me, even if they wanted to. There are so many times throughout this series where you'll hear me just desperately trying to make callouts for my teammates, and I quite literally just can't. I would have killed to just have that 2% chance that they hear what I'm saying and react to it, but I couldn't because my comms were completely muted. I, I need her to scale up. You can shoot him through the wall. Oh my god. This is like, these are rounds that we shouldn't be losing, you know? I like, ah, uh, so tough. This is what I think is weird. You know, like we're winning and then suddenly our Reyna wants to go mid. This happens like a lot. It happened the last time we played this too. Like, I don't think it's going to work out well for her, but she can try. I'll even smoke deep. There it is, right? Doesn't really make any sense to me. No, don't go mid. Don't, don't go mid. Don't, please. Stop it. So she could just tuck in that corner. She doesn't need to peek for more, but. I 
I just, I don't, stop. Stop peeking, this is so bad. By trying, over time your comps will get better and it will help you win more matches. So you can climb and theoretically encounter more players who will also communicate. There are so many things I would have said during these matches had I not had comps muted that would have easily won us the rounds. I genuinely think the issue that most players are running into when players won't listen to their comms is that their comms aren't as good as they think they are. The fantasy of these super complex strats in matchmaking is just that, a fantasy. I didn't want to talk to my teammates so I could make these super elaborate strats. I wanted to talk to my teammates so I could say, hey, watch out behind you, you're about to die. There's not really such a thing as IGLing in ranks. The most you can really do is say, hey, our A push worked really well. Maybe let's go A. Or I hear four B guys, be careful, there could be one mid. I'm not trying to turn my teammates into the next professional roster. I'm just trying to make sure I've let them know what my intention is so that they can maybe play off of me if they want to. And hey, if they don't want to, I guess we can lose, but at least I tried. Anyway though, I made the climb to diamond without comms, so even if every single one of your teammates ignores you, it's still possible to win. Your fate is in your own hands, just please oh please at least try to talk to your teammates. I promise you they'll listen more than you think. Be sure to subscribe because for our final video in the series, we are going to be revealing all of the stats from the climb including how many games I played, my win rate, and how long it took me to do so, as well as the best and worst maps throughout the whole series. As we mentioned earlier, remember if you want to catch the whole series, series where I walk you through all of my thought process in every single match and how I managed to carry players from iron to diamond as Astra without ever saying a word to them. All of that is available at Skillcapped under our 30 days to diamond course. As always though, my name is King and we here at Skillcapped want to thank you all for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.